The board consists of six class four members who serve four year terms and up to four alternates who serve two year terms, all of which are staggered. Term lengths vary if anyone is an environmental, board of education, or historical commission member. If you want more details, look up section 150-7 in the administration section of our e-code on the borough website. As complicated as it might be to keep track of all this, I think our state legislators must have set up this law so that no mayor and council could remove members at will for partisan reasons. If you want more riveting details on this, refer to New Jersey SA 40-55D. As you are aware, the Catholic Diocese of Trenton closed several schools along the Bay Shore, including the Mother Teresa Regional School in 2016. To my knowledge, none of these properties have been sold. Recently, they have received several offers for the property on South Avenue. In conversation with the diocese, we learned that the borough has been given a right of first refusal should we be interested in purchasing it. While a major acquisition such as this is well outside our current budget, I think it is important to have a dialogue with the taxpayers of this town to learn what <coughs> you would like to see happen here. This is a workshop session. This is not a done deal, despite what you might read on Facebook. <laughs> this workshop is being led by the architectural firm of Sonnenfeld and Trogia, who will explore some possibilities for the site following their examination of the property. Gentlemen, would you like to come forward, please? This is not like planning board testimony. This is very <coughs> informal, and we will have a period to um, let the public you know, offer their suggestions or comments, but because of the size of this crowd, I'm going to invoke the three minute rule so that everybody has a chance to at least have a say. Thank you. here in Atlantic Highlands. Uh, we just received approval project on West Lincoln. We received approval and actually constructing, almost finished with the First Avenue project for Calling and the uh, project on Lincoln across from the school for uh, Sabats. So we have experience with the town and we also have experience with residential construction. We were asked um, to investigate this property and uh, look at a few different options. There's many, many, many different options. This is intended to start a conversation as to whether or not it, it uh, is feasible for the public, uh, the governing body to, to do the properties. 
one of the options we studied was play fields. Another option was keeping the buildings there as they exist. And the third option was more or less looking at it kind of as a, uh, maybe as a blank, blank slate, but continuing to keep the mother trees of school in place. So with that said, I think what we'll do is start with, uh, we will start to present the different schemes. typical size soccer field, high school soccer field, and uh, place that on the site to see how it would fit. Uh, the soccer field itself is the interior dotted line, and then the exterior dotted line indicates a typical out-of-bounds area that you need for purposes of playing soccer. Uh, so, this, so basically the area needed for the, for the field and the out-of-bounds area is delineated within this darker green rectangle. Uh, as a result, the uh, thrift shop in this particular scheme will be eliminated. And as you can see from this diagram, uh, the soccer field uh, would encroach into areas which are beyond the scope of the land that we have available. You'll notice that, a tip, that typically it would go beyond the boundaries of the, of the existing building, which is uh, beyond the scope of, of the project. It would also require demolition of the school because as you can see here, that green line also extends within the rectangle of the school itself. So I think what this demonstrates is that for purposes of doing a standard soccer field, it really wouldn't fit within the scope of the, of the, so of the area that we have available to us. Another consideration with respect to putting a soccer field here in addition to the lack of adequate area for it is the fact that there's a significant grade drop off from um, Avenue D down. If you stand behind the school and look in, in the direction of Avenue D, you can see it, it's, it's, it's a significant drop off. So a soccer field has to be virtually level, uh, except for uh, migrating <coughs> purposes of drainage. So what this would also entail is between the outside dotted line and the property line um, of the street itself, uh, the right away line, there would have to be some, something to accommodate the grade change, possibly retaining walls, steep embankments and so on, uh, at least by Avenue D, because you would be basically cutting and filling this lot in here. Uh, you're limited to what you can do at this end because of the existing building, which would remain, plus the, the private lots beyond. You wouldn't want to add any retaining walls above these areas. So I, I think our evaluation of this particular scenario was that it would be difficult to make work. Uh, that doesn't exclude the possibility of de developing this for other purposes of, of play fields, such as basketball courts, tennis courts, and so on. But we wanted to use the scale of a soccer field because it gave you, gives you a good indication of the scale of the property itself and how, it, and, and, and how something like a soccer field that people can relate to would fit on the property. <coughs> Step further. 
Uh, in this particular case, what we did is we took a look at what would happen if we uh, adaptively reused or repurposed the existing school and subdivided the remaining parcel between the existing thrift shop to remain, um, the parking area for use of the, of the school, another parking area for the use of the thrift shop, as well as the, the balance of the property to be used for single family lots in the event that, that, that it was a desire to develop further um, single family detached lots. Uh, you'll notice that there's a slight size difference between the two which are located at the western portion, northwestern portion of the site, and the four which uh, uh, go from those two lots out to Avenue D. The reason why there's a slight size difference is because uh, the, existing, the existing zoning requires minimum 75 by 100 foot lots, uh, so we've used that lot compliant size for these four uh, lots. However, because of the configuration of the site and its proximity to other lots that are narrower and deeper, plus the character of other lots within the neighborhood, which are also somewhat narrower and deeper, we decided to keep these two lots as non-conforming. <clears throat> the building itself we looked at, and we estimate, taking a good look at the, the floor plans of, of the existing school, uh, what could possibly be done with the structure without making significant modifications to it, such as additions or, or wholesale cutting of the interior. So in looking at the floor plans, we saw that there were a number of classrooms which approximately fit what we would consider to be suitable for uh, smaller apartments, uh, possibly senior apartments, something along those lines. Uh, they're, slight, they're slightly on the smaller side, so we believe probably um, uh, senior housing would be more appropriate as opposed to market housing, merely because of the size of the units. The size of the units was dictated by the fact that structurally, the classrooms have masonry walls, which divide the classroom from the, from the main corridor and divide one classroom from another. That's a significant part of the structural system. So in order to accomplish this in the most economical way, we're, we're trying to preserve as much as that existing structural system and build whatever we would have to build within the, um, uh, the classroom uh, envelope itself. So we found, based on that floor plan, that the building as it exists would yield uh, 20 to 22 units, 20 or 20 to 22 apartments. There's an existing basement level, which is a fairly significant size, which in, in its life as a school was formerly used as an all-purpose room, cafeteria, as well as a pretty significant commercial kitchen at grade level. So there are some possibilities of using that uh, either at, either for purposes of um, activity areas for, for whatever apartments are developed above or possible joint use as a community center um, for, for the town uh, in one way or another, whether it's divided and segregated and one is solely for the use of that, the other one is solely for the use of the town or more of an all-purpose type of configuration where some of the time it's used for during daytime hours, for example, might be used by the, the apartments, and you have functions there on a periodic basis um, for use uh, by the town. But that's really flexible. But I think there's an opportunity to uh, reuse that, that space you know, in, the, in the basement level. The existing thrift shop over here, in this particular scheme, we maintain, we, we size and appropriately size a lot around it, but if it's to be used as some sort of assembly uh, or mercantile space, we wanted to provide some additional parking for its use, and that was located you know, at the corner here. The balance of the parking, which is shown in the lighter gray, is, is primarily for the use of the, uh, the school if it is repurposed as uh, multifamily apartments. Um, we took a look at the thrift shop and the feasibility of modifying that. It really depends on, um, on the use which is decided for it. Um, if it becomes sort, some sort of assembly building, like a community center, or um, is used for public purposes, it would require significant modifications to the structure itself, such that it would probably be economically infeasible to do so. Um, we would be required to do significant fire code modifications, sprinklers, uh, structural modifications, and so on. But in this scenario, we just wanted to show how it would fit into the overall layout 
of, of the site, regardless of whether it, it makes sense from an economic standpoint to reuse it. Uh, certainly, that could be continue to be reused as a as a residential um, property uh, fairly easily. In which case, the parking at the, at the corner would not be necessary, and it would be just yet another single family lot to go along with the um, uh, six others, which are fronting um, on Highlands Avenue. Which I think, just to clarify, if we're saying it's public use, they don't get the same exceptions. <coughs> Codes. Right. For example, for example, um, as, as a public use building or as a publicly owned or publicly developed building, um, you would be required to uh, have more significant modifications made for barrier-free accessibility. For example, installation of an elevator, uh, new doorways, widened hallways. So you can see, depending on the on the function or the use that is proposed, if it is going to be repurposed. There could be some significant modifications would be required just to bring it up to code, as well as to make it uh, uh, functional in whatever purpose it's decided to be. The number of lots, and that would be twelve lots in that area. Um, in this plan, there are six, 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 six lots <coughs> plus the thrift shop lot, which could be a seventh lot. And would you take that and just post that on that board over there? And then finally, scheme three, which is the third sheet on the handout, it, it's similar in many respects to uh, the plan I just showed you. However, in this case, what we've done is we've eliminated the thrift shop, and we've used lot sizes, which although not conforming with underlying zoning, uh, is appropriate for the community, because as you can see, it's basically the same lot sizes as adjacent, as adjacent properties. So in this particular scenario, we were able to get eight lots that are 50 feet wide, well, seven are 50 feet wide, one or 70, the corner one's 75 feet wide, fronting on Highlands Avenue with a significant depth of 140 feet, which once again matches the existing adjacent lot. Uh, by elimination of the thrift shop, we were able to get parking uh, in an L-shaped configuration on two sides and still have some room left over. Once again, the, this dark gray rectangle uh, is assuming some re repurposed use of the existing school structure. So we want to make sure we have significant area for parking. So that, 70, that 73 parking spaces is appropriate for 20 to 22 um, unit apartment building, but also by elimination of the thrift shop, we're able to get some additional open space area for passive recreation, which could be utilized uh, by this apartment uh, complex. Okay, so that, that's just really- That option still includes the potential for community space in the basement. Yes, and, and as, is, as with, with scheme number two, um, <coughs> 20 to 22 units without making um, uh, any kind of additions or really significant structural modifications and the use once again of that, that lower level basement area, which could be used either by the property solely or by the community solely or a combination um, of the two. So we looked at this as kind of a, a, a start for discussion purposes, and these diagrams are just merely to give you some idea of what might fit onto the site. Now certainly, Andy said there's a lot more alternatives that are conceivable as well, but we wanted it to limit to these three simple um, scenarios so that you can have a better handle on uh, some, of the, some of the possibilities and the, the purpose of starting discussions on the property. If I may, I just have a question. This outdoor, on scheme three, this outdoor rec square? Yes. What is that, what is that like a playground area? Or? It, well, if it's a senior's area, they, they could have things like uh, outdoor sitting areas, um, passive recreation, some, uh, even something like shuffleboard or bocce. Uh, the type of activities you usually see in, in senior apartment areas, or just basically like a patio area. Some some of these buildings have uh, even used um, uh, resident gardens. Where they have a small lot where they allow the, the residents to do a minor amount of gardening, vegetable gardening, and so on. So it's pretty much flexible. All we wanted to demonstrate is there's some room left over for functions such as that, and so to speak. So I want to throw something out if I may. Um, 
for everybody sitting up here, when you just walked in, you see these three sketches, and there's probably a ton of questions going through your mind, and you're thinking, well, it looks like the borough is gonna do something on that property. And I wanna tell you that we're not at this point. That's what tonight is all about, is to try to get some opinion and feedback from all of you. To give you a little added context, Kate, where's Kate? Kate gets up every meeting, where are you? Kate gets up every meeting and says, what's going on with Mother Teresa? And uh, on January 1st, I approached Adam and the mayor and I said, you know, you go to planning board and you see giant crowds of 300 people talking about McConnell. So here's an opportunity with this piece of property that we could do something. Uh, the, the asking price is not that much. Um, we appropriated money in the budget without any rise in taxes to any of you that if we wanted to bond and go buy this, we could do it. We didn't want to be caught um, without the means of being able to do it. Um, but um, this is a chance, if we want to, that we can develop this piece of property the way we as a town see best fit versus an uh, outside developer coming in and buying it and developing it as best way they see fit. That said, what we've done is we've, we've um, engaged these gentlemen to come up with a couple of ideas to be able to put out as opposed to just a blank piece of paper and say, we could do this or we could do that. Or quite frankly, we don't do anything at all. And we let a developer come in and buy it. We just didn't want to be, uh, and I don't want to speak for everybody, I will, I'll, I'll say that Mr. Murphy and I seem to be on the same page that we wanted to put this out to you, and I think that's fair of everybody here. Let, let the public decide. Do you want to do it or do you not want to do it? But here's a couple of ideas. You want to pass on it? Fine, we'll pass. We don't want anybody to come back later and go, boy, we had a chance to buy this piece of property in a song and subdivide it and put out a plan to developers and then say this is how we as a town want to develop this. If you want to buy it, buy it, and then you can develop for develop it for affordable senior housing if you want. Some people say that government isn't in the business of real estate. The largest holder of real estate in this town is government. So um, it's again we could. There are a few options, by the way. We could use uh, money from the state and county and just keep it open space, and it's just a park or we go bond and we do maybe one of these plans or some iter other iteration of that. Um, and so there are options, but again, we're not that deep into it, but we didn't want to have tonight with absolutely nothing really to talk about. This is just the starting point of conversation. And if at the end of the night, people are standing up saying, this is ridiculous, let's not do it. then that's fine, that's why we're here. We're listening to you guys. So I don't want anybody to think that we're like really We've pulled, you know, pulled the trigger. We're not. So I just wanted to give you guys some of that context. Okay. Mr. Collins, can we? Um, I would like to open it up. Yeah. Three with a three-minute minimum, so that everyone can at least have a chance to uh, ask a question or weigh in on this. And uh, when we recognize you, please state your name and your address for the record, please. This lady was quick with the hand up. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Stacy Smith Velez. My address is 129 Center Avenue. I grew up on West Highland across from, I'm between Avenue C and Avenue D, so I'm right in that area and I live right off of Avenue D. So I would be affected by the McConnell tract as well as this. Um, my question is, first of all, these concepts, the three that you came up with when you said soccer field, you know, we have a soccer field on Center Avenue. We also have fireman's field right there. So is that taken into consideration? Is that really an option? Do, That's not a regulation high school soccer field. right? That has come up before with people whose kids go to high school that they don't have a home field. So yeah, the Center Avenue option. Park is not a full size soccer field. Okay. Well, and it's hardly used. It's and the town used at all. And the town doesn't own the fireman's field. The fire department does. Uh, the fire department does whatever it wants to do without the town's input. Well, uh, the town inputs, and we do have a use agreement for the fireman's field. Um, but right now, we don't have summer rec there. We have it at Mother Teresa. And we do have our soccer program there. So that's the use that we get for that fee that we pay for the use agreement. Oh, great, so you do have a soccer program at the fireman's field? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I mean, to my, to my thinking and my view and 
my understanding, and plus I know Henry Hudson has a field there, that we don't need a soccer field on that okay. property, first of all. Um, second of all, I, I'm all for open space. Plant some trees, make it a real park. I, I don't mind the idea of changing the building into senior housing. Sounds like you're suggesting assisted living. Um, there's already a huge blacktop there, parking lot space. Uh, um, can we maintain the thrift shop as a thrift shop? I say, I know you said it has to be brought up to code in order for it to be essentially a legit public space. I, I, I mean, if it stays or goes, it doesn't matter to me that much. But I don't want to see more development there. And I don't think that any of these options where you're making most of it a flat field or a parking lot or anything else is going to be helpful. And as far as Avenue D traffic already, it's insane. And that, that, that should have been the first road that's addressed as far as repairs. And it's going to be the last part I can see. No, ma'am, that's not true. That's on the list for uh, spring paint. That sounds like the last. Because right now, I'll tell you something. Two months ago, South Avenue, which the mayor lives on, was paved between Avenue D and Avenue A. Okay? That road didn't even have the repair road. But it, now it's nice and fresh and clean. Meanwhile, Avenue D that takes okay, all of the traffic and has been touched. Excuse me. Right now, the comments are just about your opinions for this. Um, this piece of land. You right. So well, thank you. I, no, thank you very much. The for road use yeah. applies to that. Thank you. No. no. And if I meant, if these were just some ideas. Yes. You, you said there were many different ideas. I'm actually curious why these were the ones selected. If there were so many options. Right. Especially when it seems like the, the last two, scheme two and three, seem kind of similar. Yeah. Uh, a lot of similar. Yeah. Our, our charge was not to go too far. What we were looking to do. What one of the suggestions that was offered in our initial meeting is. Use it for recreation. Well, what's like the recreation? Well, there was talk about from some people that want to have a play field there, like a soccer field. So we wanted to at least address that concern by laying out what the scale of a soccer field would be. It's not that we're proposing that that's an ideal solution for it. We just wanted to demonstrate what would, what it would entail. Likewise, the other two plans we do are pretty minimal, minimal plans in that. Um, the uh, existing structure of the school is maintained. Uh, there are there uh, is adequate off-street parking to be able to support that structure or the, any adaptive reuse of that structure. And then the balance of the site uh, were, were subdivided into lots which were consistent with what you would see you know, in the surrounding neighborhood. Um, but certainly, any there are myriad other possibilities uh, depending probably on the outcome of the discussion that we have tonight. Okay, um, can we get back to the members of the audience here? Um, and again, uh, state your name and address. Mayor, I don't know if you can see the this woman over here had her hand up very first. And I just, I, I'm okay. advocating yeah, for her because it's like it's blocked. It's blocked. Yes, ma'am. Beth Chandler, 66 South Avenue. What about a public swimming pool that can be converted to an ice rink in the winter? Yeah, and, 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 and trees and a general park atmosphere. Some kind of um, recreational amenities we, we lack right now. <laughs> okay. I was looking at this. Hi, Suzanne Caffrey. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, I, I was, I I was before Dick. <laughs> she was Zoom. You're all the names. I have one question, sure. one suggestion. I want to know what the cost of this whole project might be. Good question. Absolutely. Well, that, Miss um, Caffrey, just put on the record your address, please. Number eight, Thank you. Thank you. So um, the price has not been negotiated. We don't know. Um, the property is not actually listed on the market right now. So it would be a negotiation, and that's really what the governing body is struggling with in executive session. So not prepared to divulge that. Uh, cost estimates, we did not ask Mr. Trochia's group to get involved with cost estimates at this time. As Mr. Crowley did say, public records, it's in the budget. There is money in the budget this year for a $2 million bond. Okay. And that's down payment. That's a public record. That's already in the budget. All right, my second comment. Can I, can I add on to that, though? That we would not be developing it. We would sell, we would subdivide and sell to a developer, and then they would, right, if you wanted a pool, then they, you know, that's, they would be installing the pool as part of if I think the senior the concept of using the building 
that I helped pay for many, many years ago <laughs> makes me thrilled that you would even consider senior housing. Uh, this town needs it, and there are many of us who have been in this town eons, and including Dick. <laughs> and I think that's a wonderful idea. Well, I think that's what this is all about. Yes, yeah, there are already years in yeah. town, and you know, this is an opportunity to see if you can. Okay, let's, can we just keep going with the public, please? Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Now, Mrs. Stratton. Former Mayor said to get on the Can I ocean one more line? Uh, super and upfield. One question that I had as a total cost because Mr. Crowley alluded to what's been put aside in the budget. Uh, I think whatever happens, nothing should be done without a referendum of the whole town. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, let the taxpayers make that decision after you get all of your plans together. Because it's going to be a costly project. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, uh, and also the senior, there's a great waiting list for the our present senior citizen building. Anything can be done to push this school into a senior would be great. Thank you. Okay, someone else? Yes, Yes, Is there a time frame for the decision that we have to, that we have before they open it up to somebody else to purchase it? So we have a right of first refusal October 1st, but uh, we can ask for a 30-day extension. And is it possible to do a partial purchase? That's not for answer. Yeah, no. Anything's possible. Yeah, that's why we just haven't gotten there yet. So you mean like half or whatever? Buy half of it and let the diocese decide to sell the other half to someone? Oh. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And Millie, no, we're on 6th Avenue. I'm a little confused. Um, John, you said that if the town bought it, we would then, put, let's say it was made into a senior center. We would not, the town would not do that renovation. And, okay. We haven't so, decided on anything yet. Nothing's been decided. Nothing's been decided. Oh, no, I'm just, I'm just curious. I know you don't have any figures written in the stone, but what the cost of that building being made into a living space would be. Uh, you know, are we talking about a million dollars? Are we well, like Councilman DeLosa just said, nothing's been decided. Right. And that's absolutely true. But the likelihood, if I'm going to spitball, right. I would say the idea is that we would take everybody's ideas, put something together, just for the sake of conversation, say it's open space, but uh, on most of it, and then half of it, we take the school and we develop that for affordable senior housing. That would go, that'd be an RFP, a request for a proposal to a developer to buy that off of us then. And then they would bear the cost of renovating that building, not us. Mr. Trophy, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Uh, price per square foot for a commercial type of building like that in a renovation to senior housing, ballpark? <coughs> <laughs> I think a, it's a, as we indicated earlier, we walk through the building and the bones are very good. It's a very, it's a very good shape. But I still have to think that you're probably in the 150 to 200 dollar square foot range. Thank you. And how many square feet? Yeah, remember, it could be 40,000. Yeah. 40,000. Remember, converting a school building to residential. Um, you're extending plumbing lines, new HVAC, uh, new uh, interior partitions. So you're, right now you have basically a classroom envelope, which is a big empty space. So that's going to have to be reconfigured into multiple rooms, bathrooms, kitchen. Um, so there's there's a significant amount of work, even if you attempt to maintain the existing structure as it is to the greatest extent possible. We also haven't done any uh, environmental investigations. Now, which, which would be required by our joint insurance fund insurance group. We would have to do a major environmental there. I'm sorry, go back. Which we could also make as Okay, can we, get, yeah, can we get, let as many people talk as possible in the public? Um, Mr. Sherman, yes. Mike Church with Mr. 5 Avenue D. I live directly across from the thrift shop. Uh, I 
see one other possibility with that property, uh, aside from, if, if the first option were exercised, okay, the, the, uh, the school to be de demolished, am I correct? The school would be demolished? If it, if it was desired to have a full-size high school soccer field there, you, as you can see from the diagram, you have to demolish the thrift shop. You even, even have to go beyond the bounds okay. of the land that's available. Yeah. However, there are other uses that are park-like uses and so on. Know. As I said, basketball courts, and tennis courts. So that's really that going to be my next question. Yeah. That seems like a, that's a good option for me because I live across the street from a park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, will will that? Do you think? Uh, does anybody think that the uh, renovation and use of the senior housing would sustain the cost of purchasing the property? Which is probably why you have other options like housing and so on. You know. Well, certainly in the schemes where we've had single-family lots, the revenue that would be much gained by selling those lots off to right. pay uh, uh, for, for some of the improvements that you make, uh, for example, uh, modifying the school building, right. new paved areas, right. and so on. So it's all a trade-off. Mm -hmm. right. So would there be a possibility of uh, having the school retrofitted for senior housing, okay? And partial part of the property uh, put in, uh, you know, units being put in there, maybe one or two. You know, it, it all depends on where the revenue is going to be, how much revenue you're going to get, right? Right, right. Okay. Exactly. So that's my, my vote is uh, the open park. Thank you. Hi, Lori Zidell from the United East Lincoln Avenue. Um, obviously, you're purchasing this for profit. So essentially, you know, you want to turn it into something that you're going to make money on. Um, an option that has been thrown around early in the stages of uh, talking about this project being, you know, coming up for sale was moving the elementary school into this building. <coughs> considerable upgrades that are too expensive versus believe it or not our school is in much better shape but going back to the profit thing not necessarily right if if the decision was go use available funds to go open public space we're not making any money off that we don't make any money off that property right now because it's on the church rolls right so not every idea that is being sort of kicked around involves a profit it could be just open space and it's there I think some of the re some of the things that we're talking about regarding profit or revenue is really trying to figure out how to acquire this without passing that burden so much on the taxpayer. You know, how do we offset this cost? And there's multiple ways that we can do this, and, and I believe that that's all part of this discussion. The property could be worth a lot more than we paid for it, in which case that would be very beneficial. We could actually take the property for a low amount. That's why it's going to work. There'll be enough room for the developer to build the building, build it out the way we want, or the open space, and then use open space money as well to purchase some of it. Again, that wouldn't come out of the taxpayer's hands. But, but the, the, the elephant in the room is the environmental. Exactly. Because we don't know what, to what that cost is going to be. Which we could also make a cost, but we can make a purchase contingent on that, which would allow us to back out right. if there was an issue. So right. the risk there would be lowest. Or you resell to a developer as is with those exposed, those environmental issues exposed, and then we're not liable for that. 
especially John for getting this going, letting us hear what's going on. Well, I couldn't, I couldn't do, I'm sorry, Karen. I couldn't do it without Well, that's answer. what I said to everybody, yeah. but especially you for getting this going. Um, I like the idea that Mike and, and uh, said uh, about retrofitting for senior housing. I think that's a great idea. I love open space, you know that already. Um, so I like the idea of having a lot of the rest of it open space and again as Mike pointed out whatever we need to make this viable um, if we have to add a couple of houses that's great but I love the idea of open space first the senior housing is great and whatever you need to do to make it happen thank you yes I'm very sorry the runner blocks team 60 Ocean Boulevard question Senior housing, could that come under affordable housing? Could we fit that in somehow? Yes, ma'am. Right. At one and a half. No, at full. <coughs> like Portland Point right now, or Spring Point Living is full. We get 56 credits. In the back there, sir. Mark Holy 74, West Island Avenue, which uh, probably is on here to uh, the project. Um, as Anybody found out what St. Agnes other considerations were for this property at all? Do you know? Or you mean other buyers? Yes, Marty? Yeah, any type of other buyers? Uh, Best of my knowledge, I heard there were two. <coughs> and, you know, the funny thing is, is we could buy this now um, and probably flip it if we wanted to and not do a thing to it and probably make I'm more. I'm thinking of it. that it's, it's an educational facility right now. Has there been any charter schools that have been interested in it or anything? Yes. Yes. <coughs> Yes, but as of right, as of two weeks ago, there was uh, not any offer or firm interest. Has the borough entered into a dialogue with St. Agnes to try to steer them maybe to that direction so you don't even change anything well, it's, that's there? Is the diocese decision St. Agnes <coughs> Church doesn't? The answer is yes. Yeah. Okay. The answer is yes. I've been on the line with Mr. Perosi from the Diocese of Trenton. Uh -huh. um, I've been the, I've been the contact. Yes. Okay. Other than that. Thank you. Yes, Karen Kennedy at Three Beaver Out. I'm, thanks for doing this. I think it's just great to get all of this opinion. I love open space, love senior housing. I love the community pool idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really love that idea. But I wonder what's the process to get everybody, the residents, input if we do decide to purchase this, which I think sounds positive. What's the process to get all of the ideas? Because it sounds like there's more ideas than what's presented here. Well, we're collecting those right now. There has been some consideration of a public survey. Uh, we do know public surveys return about five to eight percent. Um, it's costly unless you do a survey monkey. But then, unfortunately, a lot of folks, our senior folks, don't have computers. You won't get their input. Um, so there's uh, Mr. Stryker had recommended. Um, Mr. Stryker had recommended a referendum. That's got to be discussed by the governing body. Would the you referendum know. have to be, on, can you hold a referendum outside of an election day? Would that be, that would be an extra cost? Correct. That's uh, not for the budget. About $20,000. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And, and by the way, we did discuss Mr. Stryker referendum in June, but it was not allowable. Um, we couldn't get it on that ballot. Not in time. No. No. The lady in the back there, he gets in. Could we get a bunch of volunteers to walk over? Get a survey together. You know. Yeah. And then on the second note, just quickly, my sister worked for a nonprofit many years ago. That's not because there's not really a whole lot of uh, state funding. They would, they would they would buy old. Um, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, comments and they converted them into senior housing. They actually came and looked at this property many years ago. 
um, to take it and convert it into senior, senior housing. You take one classroom and make it into mm -hmm. an apartment. The next one gets split into two, the two bathrooms, the next apartment, the next apartment. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, it's doable. It's just, I don't know what the funding is out there. I think that's, I think that's a really good thing, especially as the, the town is getting more expensive to live in and people are aging and they want to stay in a kind of home, but they can't necessarily afford the houses and the houses. <coughs> There are several developers that do have an interest. I, I won't, I won't name them, but uh, yeah. for housing and retrofit. Yeah. So the senior housing thing seems to be a big hit with some of the people, contractors, and builders out there. And it seems like a big enough space you could do that in right. some open space. But I'd be going to a survey around town. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> That's your Thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, Norma Turini, 30 Washington Avenue. I just want to remind people that senior housing does not have to be low income housing. Right. It can be like Seabrook. And yep. Seabrook is beautiful, and you buy them, and then you pay a monthly fee. And that could bring in quite a bit of money for this town. And it could also be the seniors who want to live in Atlantic Highlands, because I wouldn't be able to live in a low income place. In so I think that should be considered that there will be taxes, and there will be taxes also from the house coming in, any houses. <coughs> but I think it's a good idea, and Seabrook would be a wonderful type of community to be in Atlanta Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Elaine Gidio, 81 West Highland <coughs> Avenue. Um, all those wonderful houses that you're talking about will be directly across the street from where I live. I live kind of the, right across the street from uh, the driveway of uh, what used to be St. Angeles. So for me, I would like selfishly to say, um, well, first of all, not selfishly, I want to thank all of you. And, and thank you, Marilyn, for reminding us to say thank you. <laughs> Sometimes it does seem to become an us and them thing, and the more we can be us, then we have the town that many of us really want. So at any rate, um, the apartments for seniors, I think it's a great idea because I'd like to keep living here. Um, you know, really, apartments for seniors with having some open space instead of little tiny vegetable gardens. Many of us would probably like to have butterfly gardens. You know, then probably we could make it something <coughs> that the seniors, maybe even communities, whatever, come, the kids can come and work with us. So all of these houses aren't getting. And then the rest would be open space. And when you say passive, I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's some place to play sports, maybe an outdoor fire. I don't know. Then, you know, there's a place to have parties. And, and so I'll help you design it if you want. But please, could we not have those houses? I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I, I just. Well, I think one of the reasons why we're talking about this, right, is because when you think about what could happen, and the fact of how densely populated the state is, uh, and what most towns are doing proactively in forward thinking towns to try to prevent this, you could very well fit anywhere from 15 to 20 townhouses per acre. And this is, so we're talking potentially 45, 50 new townhouses. So that's why, that's why this discussion is happening, is to see if there's something better. Thank you. The other thing, though, I do, what I was thinking when you were saying
But the building they is the under, no, the building is under a deed restriction, so it has to stay within the church. Oh, okay. The, the, the Paris Center. The if Paris you Center. approach them, them, they may consider pulling that deed restriction if the town applies. Uh, no, they can't. I've already discussed that, and they, they will not. They will. They will not. We can use it, but we have a use agreement with them, but they, they will not. They will not lift the deed restriction. I've seen, but I've been, if anybody's ever played basketball and or seen a wreck basketball game. That little gym, we, we definitely use that that gym as a for recreation sports and stuff if we were able to do so. so. Okay, I'm pretty excited. Is there a Weimar 34 East Lincoln Avenue? Uh, I have a question. Is um the thrift uh, <coughs> thrift shop uh, considered a store structure? A what? I'm sorry. A store structure. The store. The store. The store. The store. No, it's not. It's not on the national. No. The only national. Historic <coughs> registered building in Atlantic Highlands is the Strauss House Museum. And the second question, or option, I guess. Obviously, there's a big uh, concern here with the senior housing. If you were to use the existing structure as senior housing, could you make a duplicate building the same size instead of all those houses to increase the occupancy? <coughs> what do you mean? Where all these houses are. Oh, okay. Just put another building there. With <coughs> yeah, so then you would, need, you would double your occupancy. Um, oh, yes, sir. Michael Bob, 47 South Avenue. I live um, right adjacent to the uh, Mother Teresa School. Mm -hmm. I like the idea that the town to take control of my property. I like that. This way we can decide what we're going to do with it. Second thing I wanted to ask if it is senior housing, do the residents of the Atlantic Islands get first shot at that house? So it would depend. If it's taken on by Spring Point, uh, Seabrook, anything like that, the answer is no, because they're federally funded. They're not HUD, they're no, not low income, but the answer would be no priority, just like Spring Point. Um, if the town were to form, I'm, I'm really going out on a limb here, if the town were to form a self-liquidating utility, a senior housing utility, and run it on their own, uh, which I don't think we want to do, but then the answer could be yes, as long as there is no federal money involved. If there's federal money involved, it's open to everyone. I just want to know if there was some kind of priority. If they were no, to sir. Okay. Thank you. Could we put that in a sales contract if we were to sell, if we were to attain, obtain this property and sell it to a developer, a developer of senior, senior housing? Could we put that that we would please do and insist if you were to buy this, we want our residents? I would defer to Ms. Berlin, but. Um, you know, I think if that builder got federal funding, the answer would be no. Okay, yes, if you just said no. Okay, so 24 hours a day. Um, if this was converted to uh, senior housing, um, if the builder comes in and buys that, with the rest of the property, he's going to want to build more. Is there a thought for putting a restriction on how many units could be put there? That's a nice big piece of property. They're not going to want to just resurrect that one building and leave the rest of them. Well, that's where the price comes in to play. I mean, right now, the developers have wanted to buy and wanted to pay a lot more than we're potentially you know, acquired for. So if that's the case and we could, and we really wanted to maintain that, we put some need restrictions in it, and, you know, we could. But we'd also have the option of maybe selling to them at a reduced price in return if that was really a problem. Or, you know, it just, it just depends on who wants to do it. Yes, the lady standing right now. Hi, this is Staffy, 3030 South House. Thank you, um, Mr. Murphy, for bringing up the fact that we're all afraid that they're going to cram 40 something, 50 pound houses down our throat on that property. Um, I have no problem with just continuing the grid of the property lines and putting up whatever 12 houses. I don't understand how there's eight lots there, because if I, I position myself on that street, across the street from that length of property, there's maybe about five houses. So what are the size of the lots? I apologize, I'm about 10 minutes late. What's the width? The, I, I believe the existing underlying zoning requires a minimum 75 foot lot width. Uh, and a minimum <coughs> depth. Yeah, so my, my lot is about 10 foot, not deeper. A lot of the lots in that area are non-conforming to existing zoning. They predate the zoning. Well, so, 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 so 75 is 75 is, is conformant, although, like I said, no. So, so 75 
majority of people. Um, downstairs uh, in, in Mother Teresa School is a big space for uh, that, that uh, could, could be used as a community center or a rec center. So, but but then I heard you say that if if you, it was senior housing, you would be selling it to a developer to develop it. So, how could we use it as our own community center? Like, wouldn't it be better for us to, as a borough, to own to buy the property? And then keep the property and run the community center so that we can have the rec center as well. It's, it's a win-win situation. You're giving housing to senior citizens, and you're also, which which uh, we, we look up to, we respect, and we're also uh, providing a place for our young people um, for recreation. So the answer to that would be there would be an agreement with the developer, like a payment in lieu of taxes. That would be part of an agreement where the municipality, the borough, would have use of downstairs for a community center. Oh, that would be in the agreement. You would but work that into You'd have to work that into an agreement. Okay. And again, as Mr. Crowley and Mr. Murphy said earlier, whether you sell this to a developer, you want to try to at least make your money back, if not maybe a little bit more. But that would be part of any type of agreement with a developer. And I, I think it, it, it would be great 
the, 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 I'm glad you're talking about a senior, senior housing, because that building was built in 1967. It's not an old building. If you compare it to Atlantic Highlands Elementary School, which is much older, was originally the high school, and now it's the elementary school, that's, that's a fairly new building. As someone put, said earlier, it's in good shape. It does need renovation. So I think it's nice to, in this day and age where it seems to be tearing down so many things, it's nice to preserve our past by keeping that building up. Let me also add something to what you're saying as far as the lower level. The, the lower level square footage is in excess of close to 14,000 square feet. Okay. To give you a basis for comparison, uh, if you've ever gone to one of these active adult communities that have clubhouses, you know, where they've got club rooms and fitness rooms and so on, uh, for a community of 200 to 300 homes, those clubhouses are usually in the neighborhood of six to 7,000 square feet. So half, half the size of what's in that basement area of that house, so uh, that building. So it gives you an idea of, of the area that you have available. That's, that's down in, there. In addition, a good measurement is front of this building, back of the building, side side, 10,000 square feet. Rich said 14,000 is downstairs. So it just gives you, this building's 20,000, bottom floor, upper floor. So it just gives you an idea since you're in the building, you can see what it is. Is that you know, what used to be the kindergarten? Yes. Okay. There's a kin there was a kindergarten, a cafeteria, uh, a commercial, full commercial kitchen. Boiler room. Boiler room. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of space down there. Anyone that hasn't spoken before? Um, yes. Good evening there. Uh, KJ62 Avenue D. Thank you, John. Um, I guess I'm a bit of a dreamer, but we all know Atlantic Islands is a bit of an, it's always been a fabulous place to live. I've been to Seabrook, Brandywine, and this is a perfect opportunity for us to take advantage of our reputation and for the need for senior, upscale senior living. Uh, St. Agnes um, is attached to the uh, gym also, right? Isn't mm -hmm. the school attached to the gym? So that's yes, another yes. whole Correct. issue about <coughs> separating things. That might be a little bit more. Utilities are already separated there, except I see Mr. Halling. Where's Mr. Halling? He just left. Oh, uh, he knows the answer. Yes. I think, with the exception of sewer, all utilities there are already separated. <coughs> That's the way it was built. Okay. But I mean, people that would enjoy a living in Seabrook, the downstairs cafeteria area, it's it would be nice for a rec room. I mean, part of it is the boiler room, so you can't count that, and the restrooms are down there, so you can't count that as as usable space. But it would just be a really lovely, lovely area for. Um, for upscale senior building. And Elaine's idea of having like little community garden, that's just fabulous. But I have a question to ask you. Mm -hmm. Middletown always has seniors first for their housing. How do they do that? How do you mean seniors first? They're all, you mean they're resident seniors? Yep. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know that well, maybe we we'll find out. Sure. Because they have like, what, five or seven I know they have a housing lottery, uh, but they also have a housing authority. And the authority, um, again, I, I, I don't know enough about it. I'm not, I'm not going to guess. I'm going to have to check. To yeah, find just out. find out what, what's involved. But I know like in Highlands, VTAC Towers, mm -hmm. Jenny Parker, they don't have Highlands priority because they're federally Right, right. Funded. Just like Portland Point was always just. Correct. You know, got on the list for the lottery. So, yeah. Marty, you. do you recall the water and sewer at Mother Teresa, remember you just did an evaluation. Was it everything separated except for the sewer, or was it water? Uh, the uh, fire center has got a separate sewer. The water comes off the main building. Okay, I, I, I had it reversed. Okay. So it's already built separated except for water. So it wouldn't be an issue either way? Not really, it's just the new water line. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir, in the room, sir. On the wall, and then I'll get to me. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Perry, uh, 81 West Highland Avenue. Um, well, the first decision is to should the town acquire the property, and it sounds like most people are certainly in favor of that. I'm, you know, I certainly that's second that. That's, that's the first thing to go ahead. Yes, let's go ahead and get it and figure out what to do with it. Um, I like the idea of senior housing and keeping as much space open as possible. 
first we have to get the property before someone else does, because we know what's going to happen if the developer gets it. That's my two cents. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Yes, thank you. Shelley Kennedy, 104 East Highland. Uh, two questions. I assume the church still owns this property, right? Yes, ma'am. So it hasn't been included in any of the affordable housing plans for the town? No, ma'am. That's correct. If we get any affordable units out of this, this would help go towards meeting our obligation in the future, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. We don't have any plans for that currently, obviously, and we don't know how much it would be, but it could happen that way, right? Well, we, we, we do know what our plan <coughs> is. Our plan right now, our judicial order was signed back in June. We're good through 2025. We do have 256 rehabilitation units to go through. I forget what our unmet need is, but this would count towards future affordable housing obligations. But was this property included in that plan? No, no. 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 Okay. It's not available. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Um, about the survey, all volunteer walk surveys around too. That's a great idea. Also, please utilize the robocalls to people to remind them to do this. And I think you could still put a. Uh, a questionnaire or survey monkey on the town website because even if you get duplicate input for people, sometimes people, if you go around with a written comment sheet, people say, Oh, well, I forgot to put this down, and the survey monkey type arrangement would give them a chance to put additional input in. I'd also like to recommend that we have at least one more open public meeting like this. I know it's sometimes a problem to get everybody together in the same room, but these kinds of interactive discussions are extremely <coughs> useful, particularly when trying to exchange ideas. It is definitely on the recorded minutes. We know we have issues with the recorded minutes. You have to go through Internet Explorer um, in order to listen to them. These plans that were handed out right here, these will be on the website. The picture, the picture yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. I don't have a written presentation from Andy or Rich, but it, these plans will be on there with a little synopsis. Okay, and just one more. Uh, the, I would like us to consider whatever we do to make a decision that is tax neutral or allows the town to profit from whatever our decision is instead of raising taxes. Thank you. You know, I'm going to just play the devil's advocate for a moment. I am in favor of the senior housing. Keep that straight. We buy this, and if we can't flip it or we build it, the borough is looking at yeah, you're looking at a, a a good tax increase in order to afford this. We put the money in the budget, put down on a bond that would hopefully come close to getting the property. You still have to pay for the bond, and if we did any renovation, we'd still have to pay for that. So it's not going to be tax neutral no matter what we do. You know, after the initial <coughs> report, and even after we bought it, whatever the bond payment is, it would have to be raised through taxes. Right. Now, I'm not saying the taxes will go up. Maybe there's a way we can keep it down. But the odds are pretty good that we would have to increase. The other side of it is, if we're able to turn around and flip it, like John is suggesting, then okay, we're in good shape. But that's you roll the dice whether we can do that or not. But if we were to buy this, then we would project ourselves to the contract, right? And how through contingencies within the contract that allow us to back out if needed. So, as far as running the, the, uh, the remediation or the development, you know, there's ways to raise money. You know, this could very well be a uh, short-term cost for a generational improvement. So this is definitely worth listening. Yeah. Well, I agree it's worth listening. And to, to add on, Jim, to what you're saying is, let's just say that we walk out of here a, a month from now in another open session, and the, the consensus is that, yes, let's move forward with it, but let's develop the school and the senior affordable housing on the one side of the property, and on the other side of the property, we want to keep that open public space. Right. The funds for the open public space would not be coming from our bond. That would be monies that are available through right. governmental agencies. So there's no cost to us on that. We would apply to Green Acres. We'd apply to Green Acres. And then on the senior affordable housing side of the property, because we'd have to subdivide the property here in Merritt Council, that's what we would bond for. But what we would, I mean, yeah, there's a roll of the dice that that no developer is going to want to pay us for what we paid for that part of the property. But um, 
I don't think uh, people's homes are sitting on the market right now. I think they're they're going very quickly, and I think that that that's a roll of the dice. That at least we're saying as a town, we want this as senior affordable housing. We want this to go against what uh, our obligation is to Trenton, and um, that's our decision to make. It's not a developer coming in here and doing something else, and if they wanted to level it and turn it into something else and have way more. Uh, Way more families living in that space than we want. Yeah, there's also there's still there's still public comment. I, I hate to get you guys off, but there's still public. <laughs> yeah, but people are ans asking questions, and, and I think okay, it's very good. This was for the public to be able to weigh in on this. We can discuss this, you know, afterwards. But I want everybody to at least be recognized once yes. who hasn't spoken already. Absolutely. You have a blue shirt there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seth Herman, 58 South Avenue. Um, first of all, thank you, Mayor and Council, for being forward-thinking enough to give us the opportunity to even approach this, as opposed to just letting somebody swoop in and just let it happen without even any sort of consideration. And thank you for allowing us, the public, to have a voice. Um, so I live directly across the street. Um, I have kind of two things. So one, this is very specific, but I want to throw it out there now, just because sometimes people say this is a preliminary plan, and all of a sudden it's happening. Um, I'm noticing that, the, and not here, I mean in general. Um, the, the entrance, I'm looking at the entrance to Scheme 2 and also on our Scheme 3 and Scheme 2, that's right, almost right on the corner of South Avenue. That street is on an angle, and in order to make that turn and then turn into that driveway, uh, I find that, I think that would be a very difficult maneuver. I think you might want to consider leaving the entrance where it is, the current entrance or put it on maybe a, a bigger entrance on Avenue D, maybe that could go both ways. We, we were advised that uh, it was undesirable to have <coughs> driveway entrances off of Avenue D. Yeah. So that's why we, that's why we placed it in that location, because the way the existing building is located, the only place for access would have been close to the corner. If, it, you know, if, you, if you keep the existing building, there's no place you can get out back to park the building basically is a barrier. <coughs> I agree, and I appreciate that, but I'm also advising you otherwise. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I realize that's my selfish opinion, but having lived across the street from the school and watching people try to pull in and drop their kids off, that corner, when there's traffic, gets congested all the time because people can't make the turn. It's a very tight radius. It really is. Um, on another note, um, is it Mr. Barry, I think, pardon? Um, mentioned, um, the, uh, the, the idea of, cons of actually getting the property first and then deciding what to do with it, given time restraints and things like that, that may be a good idea considering there are so many possibilities of what to do with this land. 
we may just want to decide tax burden, et cetera, referendum, however, survey, et cetera, et cetera. Do we get the land at all first to even make this attempt and then really sit down as a town and figure out what exactly to do with it? Thank you, that's it. Okay, I will recognize anyone who has spoken. Yes, Tucker. Tucker Center for 57 Avenue C. I'm going to keep it short and also pleasant. Uh, what I want, why is that so funny? I want to thank everybody up here for being proactive and also listening to the citizens. And I think uh, if we do more of this, there's going to be a lot more happy people at these meetings in the future. So thank you. Thank you to Mr. Crowley and Mr. Murphy and everybody up here for being proactive on this one. I, I think uh, you can see the reaction here. Everybody appreciates it, and, and I certainly do as well. Thank you. Okay, just one, I'll make it really short. Okay, no, no, I said, okay. Stephanie Lanianas is very slim. So, Stephanie Lanianas is very slim. So, if all this stuff happens, are our borough um, uh, regs? But, you know, uh, what are they called? Oh my God, the master plan. Is the master plan up to date? So yes. that, yes. God forbid, whatever happens, no one's gonna come and build a four-story uh, senior citizen's housing and build in there, or that's not more dead thing. That's, 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 that's my biggest fear. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we need to keep I think the, the property building. is protected by the master plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. It's in an R1 zone, so. Yeah, right. it's an R1 zone, Steph. Yeah. Okay. Right. I have one question. Just this will take ten seconds. Show of hands. Uh, here's. For, I'm going to ask three questions. First question: Who absolutely hates the idea? Raise your hand. Oh, what? The, the, what we're talking about. The, per, the idea of purchasing. Two, two hands. Four, four, four hands. Okay. Somebody take that. Um, who? <laughs> Is interested, but I gotta know more. Show of hands. What? Keep them up. Who's interested in the idea, but I need to hear more information? Well, hang on. One last question. Okay, all right. Fair, fair enough. Who's number, door number one, door number two, door number three? Last question. Who really likes the idea on the face of it? Purchasing. 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 We decide what we want. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Is there any cost though? I mean, I guess that's my question. Is we, we, we are, I love, take your hands down because I'm going to say, I don't mean that in a bossy way. I mean it in a, I, I really, I, I've been quiet because I wanted to hear from the public. I've met with residents in the community. Um, I've talked to pretty much, well, everybody I know in this room I've talked to about this. So. I'm, I, what I need to know, as I'm talking for the 4300, and, and deciding for the 4300, is are we saying at any cost? Because we're, I think everybody's interested, but I don't. We're not limiting what the cost would be to the residents, and I, I think that changes those questions a little bit. And I don't disagree with anything that anyone has said this evening, but, but that's to me, I need to hear more from the public about what the what, up to what cost. Right. Because we haven't presented you with any numbers. Yeah. And so we're excited about the possibility, but to me, sustainability and protecting the future, like Jim said, <coughs> like to me, what Jim said is really important. Um, so that's, I mean, that's when I react to that, that's what, where I'm at. We can't say that number right now, but the plan is to be able to do that soon and know that at this current time, we have set aside the, what I believe to be the appropriate amount of money to be able to make that purchase if the town wants to do it. No, we have we put the, the, the bond, bond, the bond. We put the cost down so the fire out to get the bond. Correct. So, so in order to the bond would raise the tax. Right. In order to bond, you have to put down 5%. So if it's a million, 50,000. If it's 2 million, 100, 3 million, 100, you know, you do the math. So, you know, and, and, and we know that the church has gotten offers up to 3 million. So, the governing body and you know your input is very important to figure out where we're going and a lot of great ideas you know the senior housing sell off the back no all housing great you make a little bit of money i would imagine if you did that um half and half keep some parts some open space all open space i wrote down almost everybody's comments unless it was duplicated i didn't write it again so we have all that i'll put it in a format for the governing body 
We are going to go into executive session after the meeting tonight. We have more business to conduct beside this tonight. Um, and they'll talk about some finances. But can we also do one thing? And I just want to ask everybody, um, once we have a price, what this should cost, whatever, who here would still like to see a referendum? that the public actually votes on to say yay or nay, go ahead with this. Do you guys want that authority to tell us what to do? Okay, but, here's, but here's the problem. Here's the problem. The problem is, is that if you do a referendum, referendum is time. You don't have enough time to put this on a ballot for the November election. And if you don't have it, it can only go on at certain times of the year. So now you're going into 2020, and I don't think the diocese is going to hold this piece of property for the municipality into 2020. So your referendum, I think the survey monkey, Shelly, uh, uh, Stephanie, Carrie, I, you know, to walk door to door and, and collect and gather and put together. I think, the, you know, I, I think that's probably the way to go. A referendum is just going to take you time. And unfortunately, I know it's a big decision and it's a lot of money, but you don't have time. Okay, Ms. Clayton was raising her hand, but I couldn't see before, so the, Your name and address, please, I'm sorry. Beth Chandler, I'm uh, sorry, 66 Santa. South Half. Thank you. Um, the question of at what cost is, there's, you know, two sides to it. The dollar cost, or the impact costs of, if it goes to a developer and it's riddled with mansions and there's traffic galore and they're ugly, you know, the people who live like me right across the street are not going to be very happy. And not that everybody's trying to make me happy, but I would, I would like to analyze the at what cost one against the other. Yeah, thank you. Right. When I think, when I think this is yeah. part, I think with any decision, you do a cost versus benefit analysis. And once we get that cost and we compare it to the benefits that we're discussing here, it's easier to make that decision. Yeah. As far as the, the objective behind getting your opinion, the referendum would be great, but that's not stated. You know, we may that may not be as feasible as we would all like. So, you know, we're having this meeting, and maybe another meeting, and just uh, walking around. We're, we want to make this our best effort to get the entire 4300's point of view. Just understand we are our options, our ability to do all of that the way you want to. The way you want. I think we're all really in agreement here that the quality of life of the residents, the people next to any new developments is priority because we've had enough issues with that. Yes. We're very, very aware of that. And that's a main priority for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, person who hasn't spoken before, could I just have that? And there's a two of you in the back. So would the lady like to go first? Lynn. Lynn Hawley, 74 West Highland Avenue. Again, my property cuts right into multi directly affected with anything that's done. Um, with anything that's been said, I'm kind of open to everything. Um, although I'm being selfish and I don't want to look out my dining room window and see the house next to me. Um, so I'd like you, you know, to just keep that in mind. But I understand that, you know, we have to do what we have to do. Um, Lori and I were talking a while ago, and I would request that um, maybe a community panel could be put together um, with um, some people, but um, especially some of the uh, residents that would be directly affected to have their input in their uh, side or you know, on, um, what would be done. That was just a neighbor. I believe that was a, a makeup meeting. Mrs. Wigginton, Mrs. Herpin, I think Lori went and a few of her other neighbors. So. And that wasn't an appointed advisory committee. Okay, that, sir, that's something we should do. That's a great idea. Yes. This day was in the election. Yesterday at 119 Center Avenue. Um, why the sudden sense of urgency, though? The school's been closed for three years. Um, I'm hearing all this talk about flipping it, that we're going to make more money on it. Um, as a lifelong Catholic, take this how you want, <laughs> and deal with the Diocese of Trenton, <laughs> when they close my kid's school that goes there, they're not in the um, business of giving deals out. All right, when it comes to money, I, I don't get why they're, it's a sudden sense of urgency when the place has been closed for three years. Sure, and, you know. Sure, so the first thing is they pay about $2,000, don't hold me to it, that's what I hear, a month, 
for electric gas heat. They still have to air condition certain parts of the, pro uh, of the project and fire alarm management because you have to do that. They want out. They've tried to get other charter schools or other schools there. Nobody wants it. We've chased away bus companies that want to park buses in the parking lot uh, and claim that it would get through the planning board because it's already a non-conforming, it's a school. And the biggest issue is they had a developer come in and offer a lot of money. And we know that the diocese has been trying to sell, whether it's Holy Family, uh, St. Anne's. The 25 uh, other schools that they are. Exactly, and OLPH, yeah. you know, the thrift shop down there, Highlands is built in their municipal building. So the sense of urgency isn't on our part, it's Mr. Crowley, Mr. Murphy, the governing body. We're afraid the diocese is going to sell it from under us. And then we're gonna be stuck with a developer coming to the planning board coming up with, Mr. Murphy said, 40, 50 townhomes, or coming in with a plan that would go before the planning board. So the sense of urgency is on the governing um, bodies, exactly. Yeah, that's what, like jumping in though, with that sense of urgency, scares me a little bit because what if you can't put them, you go in there and God knows what's buried there. Well, well you know, the sense of urgency is with more or less the first round of refusal that we have. They sell it to a developer, the developer still has to go for our planning board, correct? Right? So build whatever they're going to build? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. so, okay. It's just a, if there's any sense of urgency from us up here, it is merely to the, to the fact that we have this opportunity, this uh, first right of refusal that will expire. Now, as Adam stated earlier, we are planning on asking for an extension. But with the you know this, the talks going on so far, we have you know have this opportunity. So that's one of the reasons why we have discussed the uh, possibility of trying to get the extension. So there isn't so much pressure on our community to make a decision. But you know again, that's where the sense of urgency is coming from. It's from that first right of refusal that they're. I thought it was on their end. That's why I'm like sitting there for years. You know? no, no, not not on their end. No, okay. we don't want them to sell it to. A developer. And by the way, we've been reaching out to them for quite a while. Like, what are you going to do? Yeah. For many, 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 many months. So, and then they finally made the decision, as Adam said. And I can't say anything more, but just to say that if we were going to do a deal, it's it would be better, way better than what a developer would be paying. So that's the other part of this is like we've got the wherewithal, we could do this. Okay, if there's no one else who hasn't had a chance to speak, Mr. Fisher. Fisher. Mark Fisher, 91 Third Avenue, just a couple of if questions. If we should be able to acquire this land and we select, whether as a community or as a council, one of the three proposals, would there be a project manager handling the project? In other words, it won't be you, Adam, or the council or the borough engineer. It would be a completely separate entity, an engineering firm maybe, handling that plan? Um, that I don't, I can't speak for the council, but you know, my vote would be Mr. Trochia. He has saw this thing through from start. It'd be great to see it through finish, but it would not be anybody up here managing this project. Don't have time, energy, or effort to do it. That's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> the, second, the second different question. If part of his property were to be maintained as open space, would we tap into our open space fund to keep it that way? Or would it be all state, and federal, county, whatever? Sure. So New Jersey has a $17 million bank. I see Mr. Childs here before. Is he still here? Is it still $17 million, Benson? The county? No, the state. Uh, I don't know the exact I think it's $17 million and uh, we would seek money from there. Uh, Green Acres, State Green Acres works in a funny way. It's a 50% match. But it depends on what the property appraises at, on and on and on. I know right now on the rolls of our tax assessor, the property is assessed at 6.4 million. Um, that's way high. Um, so it's hard to say. You know, right now there's uh, right now there's about 125,000 in open space waiting for another 356 in reimbursement from FEMA for the trail. So there's a half a million dollars that would be available. Um, if we didn't have to tap into our open space, that's what I would that's what I would prefer, and it depends on the appraisal and the commitment from the state green acres. Just a 
call to that, the FEMA payback to yeah. in, to, into the existing fund? Right. When is that expected? Well, we did a uh, request for reimbursement, um, RFR, back in December of January of 18. That's FEMA. We, uh, any day now, we're waiting. <laughs> We do as well. We do. It's obligated. So, I mean, do we have a half a million in cash in our bank account? No. But money from FEMA that's obligated, it, it's, it's as good as cash. Yes. Not yet. It's almost as good as credit. It's almost as good as credit. Okay, if everyone has had a chance to weigh in on this, I do appreciate all of you coming out and uh, being here. We like having a crowd. Um, and uh, we will take a lot of this under consideration and, and, and try to um, try to move forward. And I will take you up on the walking the streets to you know how we get the you know well you're doing it anyway for campaign. So everybody that's the campaign, we'll give you the survey. <laughs> that? Sounds good. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I just I already spoke. I just have to say. But if wisdom, we used, voice my wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> if Any? you used uh, Survey Monkey or, or some system away on the um, website, okay. would, that, would that be your The best thing to do is send me an email. Okay. Or okay. Mrs. Clark. We will okay. compile all the emails okay. and uh, we will manage those to the governing body in, uh, not individually, but as a package. Sure. Perfect. Okay, yeah. great. Thank and you we're so making much. that point for anybody who's not going to be available during that time. Anybody? Yeah. Anybody here? Or tell your neighbors, friends, if you want your voice heard or your opinion heard, send an email. Now you're going to stick to the rest of the agenda, right? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> We've got exciting reports coming up.